Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review every episode of Star Wars The Clone Wars one season at a time. In this video I will cover all the episodes of Season 7 of Star Wars The Clone Wars. So... Here we are, the final season, as they call it. Uh, season 7 of Star Wars The Clone Wars, of course, was released six years after the previous season, Season 6, uh, which is quite a sizable gap uh, because, of course, Season 5 was canceled on the Cartoon Network and they were able to get one more season because they were in the middle of producing it to release on Netflix, but that was seen to be the end of the show because this is when Disney acquired Star Wars and uh, they didn't want Cartoon Network to air it as they were kind of a competitor. Um, however, uh, a while later, because Disney had launched Disney Plus and they were planning on doing all these Star Wars uh shows and they were actually including uh canon from star wars the clone wars because the, when disney took over star wars ip they made a lot of the uh novels and comic books and other various uh non-movie material uh not canon but they didn't do that for clone wars they kept it as canon and so uh, eventually they were able to um continue it on disney plus which was released uh, only two years ago, um, I I think I remember a little bit about when this was, re was released and some people making a big deal out of it. I, of course, had never seen The Clone Wars. I wasn't about to watch the final season without having seen the six seasons pri uh, previous to it. But, um... Watching it now, it's, it's, you know, it's interesting because, of course, I watched Clone Wars in order, as you know, for the first time. Uh, and... But when this aired, this actually aired after all of Rebels had aired. This is aired after all the <laughs> newer Star Wars movies that came out, which from the previous season of uh, Clone Wars, none of those newer movies had come out. Uh, and that includes, of course, uh, you know, the newer trilogy and uh, Rogue One and Solo, which is important because some same things that were referenced in Solo are also re referenced this season. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, um, The Mandalorian Season 1 <laughs> had come out before this season. That kind of blew my mind when I realized that, like, because I was like, oh, yeah, this came out in 2020, whatever, but then when it was actually pointed out to me, like, hey, Mandalorian came out in 2019, I was like, oh, it was actually before this. <laughs> so, uh... But season two was after this, and of course we have season two is when we have more of the Star Wars, Clone Wars characters show up, like uh, Sokatana and Bo-Katan, um, which, yeah, in retrospect, looking back on, uh, I was not familiar with those characters at all when I saw season two of The Mandalorian, but for most people, uh, their appearances in this season were very fresh in their minds. Uh, so it does give me kind of a newer perspective on everything now of course i have decided to watch season seven right after season six rather than watch rebels first and then watch this uh so i was yet to see rebels at this stage uh, i haven't i i've heard that they the season had some references to rebels which of course i did not catch because i have not watched it yet but maybe once i watch it i will get it uh, um and apparently ahsoka tano and rex appeared in rebels so people knew that they would make it out alive which i didn't learn that until after i watched season seven so of course i knew ahsoka tano made it out alive because she was in the mandalorian uh, um uh but still i didn't know rex would make i mean i kind of assumed that he would but i didn't know that for a fact like people had seen rebels um and also, um, yeah, so I had many people suggest to me that I watch The Bad Batch immediately after uh, Clone Wars because it kind of continues off of uh, the Clone Wars, which I, I get that impression because, of course, they're introduced in the season. But I had decided not to because The Bad Batch, as far as I know, is still going. It's still airing, whereas Rebels is done. So I want to watch Rebels first. 
Um, and that came out first. And I'll just wait. <laughs> I'll be patient and wait to get, even though I know that Bad Batch is more directly related to the Clone Wars than it is to Rebels. Uh, I'll just circle back to it. I'm fine with doing that. <laughs> That's all good. Anyway, Season 7, I think, is my favorite season. I said that last uh, month, I said Season 6 was my favorite so far. I think Season seven's even better. Uh, honestly, because it's funny, I had the almost the opposite reaction watching the season I did to Season 5, because when I watched Season 5, there was a chunk of eight episodes in the middle that I thought were crap, so Season 5 was worse than I thought it would be. Where Season 7, I was warned, oh, that oh, it's only the last four episodes that are amazing, uh, the other eight aren't, aren't so good. In fact, I had certain, some people tell me that uh, there's a four-part in here that totally sucks, and I actually didn't think it was that bad. I, in fact, I've heard that opinion all over the internet that that four-part in the middle of the season was terrible. I didn't think it was terrible. I mean, it wasn't the best thing ever, but it was all right. It was okay. I, to me, that puts it above previous seasons because it consists of three four-parters. It's basically just three stories. And the first one's pretty good. The second one's okay. It's like mediocre. And the third one's freaking amazing. So <laughs> to me, that, that by far puts it over any other season because i would say the first i don't know I was, I was maybe first four seasons or maybe three seasons didn't have anything that really knocked my socks off maybe season four kind of did uh but definitely and season three had a couple of, of good episodes but no like four parters that i thought wow this is fucking amazing and it had a lot of mediocrity and a lot of bad episodes and I already talked about season 5 how that had 8 of the worst episodes in a row even though it ended strong with 5 very strong episodes or no it was 7 strong episodes or 6 how many many the end was good uh, <laughs> but that middle was just god awful uh, and season 4 was also a mixed bag and then season 6 um, has said that was my favorite previous because it was more strongest but this was even stronger than season 6 uh, in my opinion because Jar Jar wasn't in it <laughs> which always helps uh, yeah so so yeah and that ending I think that's definitely my favorite uh, part of the whole entire show I think Really, the way it was presented, they presented it like a movie. Like, they even changed the opening credits to have, like, the George Lucas, um, you know, I symbol thingy at the start. Um, I really think, I kind of, some people think that they shouldn't have bothered with the first eight episodes and just did these four. I think that they should have did this four as a movie, really, because you got four half hour episodes that's that's a movie <laughs> and um they began clone wars with the movie they could have ended it with the i mean the one they began the movie they began it was sucked and they could have ended it with this movie which would have been amazing uh but whatever i mean it don't really doesn't really matter too much what format they bring it in it was amazing um so anyway Let's go ahead and jump into the episodes of Season 4. Uh, let's start with the first... Or season 4, sorry. Season 7, for fuck's sake. Start, jump into the episodes of Season 7. We'll start with the first episode. The Bad Batch, um, of course, with the show. I already mentioned that. I knew the spinoff show they're doing. Um... I think it's a good thing that my sister warned me that these episodes were not so good and that she didn't like The Bad Batch and she wouldn't have thought it would be a good show based off of these episodes. Uh, but the show actually turned out to be much better than what these episodes would suggest. And I'm glad she told me that. Otherwise, I would not be interested to watch that show and I would think it would not be very good. Now, long as I said, like I didn't think these episodes sucked. But I wasn't that impressed with the characters of the Bad Batch themselves. They felt like a bunch of walking cliches. You got the, the kill, want to beat everyone up and kill everything cliche. You have the techno nerd cliche. Uh, you have the leader cliche. You have the 
um, the sniper cliche, and there's other, I can't remember all the cliches, but they're all just a bunch of walking, talking cliches, and it, it kind of throws me off how they look totally different from the other clones, and, and it's, I think it's kind of dumb how they refer to all the clo other clones as regs, and I also think it's kind of dumb how they were allowed to exist, like, outside of the the military structure of all the, all the other clones and they answered to no one and they came out they did come off as really silly but that being said like i i i would i'd like the story that was involved and i do even though there were a bunch of walking cliches it allowed me to sort of identify or you know go understand them very quickly because i've seen these type of characters or you know uh, stereotypes or archetypes if you want to be more fair uh, <laughs> um, and so I immediately un understood these characters who weren't able to follow them and enjoy their, their journey it just you know they weren't very interesting to me in that regard but um, you had other characters like the Rex who, who was very interesting um, and how his quest to find um, Echo who he believes is still alive uh, because, and it was an interesting premise too to begin with where, you know, the clones are getting their asses kicked and they seem to know their, all their tactics, what they're going to do before they do it. And they, they surmise it's because they're drawing this information um, from Echo. So it was okay. It's a pretty, pretty interesting episode. And we get to the next uh, continuation of this. Uh, a distant Echo where they actually go to rescue uh, Echo. Uh, and this was a very intense episode. I actually really liked this. It sort of raises the stakes. They used the bad, as cliche as they may be, they used the Bad Batch in a very interesting way. And then we also had Anakin involved in this as they, you know, stormed the compound and rescued. And it was, it, I was very invested. I thought it was pretty intense, particularly when Rex finally got up to be reunited with that go and he had all those weird things attached to him whatever i thought like the uh what should we call it techno drone or whatever his name was i thought he was because he said that um echo was dead so i took him at face value i thought that he was like echo was actually dead and they were just like drawing this information from his corpse or something weird like that but it turns out he was still alive which is you know a happier ending and uh and, uh, yeah, and they fought to, uh, to get out of the compound. So, yeah, so that was a pretty intense episode. So then, this next episode, On the Wings of Karadax, which I guess are those weird flying thingies that they come across. This episode, I don't think actually needed to exist. I mean, it was, I didn't think it sucked. It was fine, uh, but it's, they do this, and I'll get into this a lot more in the next four-parter, but they do this a lot in the Clone Wars where they make these four-parters that should have been three-parters or three-parters that should have been two-parters. They just find ways to draw the story out. And and this is kind of because they rescue Echo at the end of the last episode, but this episode they have to get him out and get him back and, and fight all these flying drones. And it's just like by then you're like, all right, you're, we're kind of just going through the paces. And plus I didn't really like how they involve the natives and the war natives like oh how dare you come to our planet don't bring your war here and they're like no no we're not going to bring the war don't worry about it and then they fly right back to them and they do exactly what they said they didn't weren't going to do they bring the war right to them and when they point this out they're like oh but look at echo look what they did to him and all of a sudden they're like oh yeah that's horrible let's all fight a war and die and they and then, then the drones show up and kill a whole bunch of these people and at the end, they're like, oh, we're all good with you, you know, re Republic types. Thanks so much. No, <laughs> like, they just got a whole bunch of them killed for no reason. I don't think just because they did fucked up shit to Echo that that would have excused the fact that they did the one thing that they told them not to do. <laughs> so, I mean, don't get me wrong. I still, I thought this episode was good, too. I still liked it, but that, yeah, it had more about it that bothered me. Anyway, then we'll get to the final episode of uh, this little saga, Unfinished Business. Uh, this is probably my favorite of this of the four-parter, um, where they um, 
come up with a plan to try to uh, defeat Admiral Trench, or whatever. This is when, or was his name? Yeah, was his name Trench? I don't know. Yeah, Trench. Where they, um, this is where the one who was defeating them, them before because they were getting all this tactics fed to them and he's not aware that you know the echo has been rescued so they you know have sneak aboard his ship and have echo like interface with them and make him think like he's sending them battle tactics and he tells them the wrong thing to do and he gets uh obi-wan and windu are on the planet and they're getting surrounded he sends like every single uh droid that they have to attack them and of course they start to get their asses kicked but it's all part of echo's plan and i like how they had this tension like even the 40s newscaster narrated at the start is like can he really be trusted and they have this whole thing throughout uh the episode where they make you think that echo can't be trusted but really he can and i kind of liked that i liked that they were te i thought it would have been very cliche cliche had he like turned evil or like gone crazy and started working with them again i like that he actually did uh could be trusted and uh did in fact defeat all the droids but then of course trench comes up with the plan to blow up a bomb so you get get more intense there um and you this is when you get kind of um and they're kind of easing since this is the season that's ghost uh meets up with revenge of the sith timeline they're easing um anakin skywalker more towards the dark side and so he just freaking like kills that spider you know admiral trench guy and just just chops off his arms and and just freaking kills him <laughs> in a very dark way which is, which is a good way of uh, sort of saying now no this turn to the dark side does not come out of nowhere in fact i think the show did a much better job than the movies of kind of easing us into uh this turn of the dark side uh so so yeah i really like this episode i thought it was pretty good all right, so then we go into the next four-parter that, you know, as I said, most people didn't like. They thought it was really boring. I thought it was fine. Uh, it's uh, the first episode's called uh, "Gone with a Trace." Get it instead of "Without a Trace" because the character's name is Trace. <laughs> um, I thought this was. It you know it was a bit dull and maybe something we've seen before, but. It does answer the question of what uh, what Ahsoka has been up to, and I do actually like the character story for Ahsoka, and I did like the character of Trace and her sister, um, was it Rada or something like that, Ratha. Yeah, um, we they were they were interesting characters, and I love the the perspective of them, like you know, growing up poor, and Ahsoka saying kind of being. A, uh, confront it with like this different opinion where they didn't like the Jedi and and um, her having to sort of live that lifestyle for a while and of course you know the sister up to no good or whatever uh, so it was you know it was maybe somewhat dull but it was it was okay it was it was an okay episode and then getting to the next episode in the batch deal no deal uh, where uh, Ahsoka <laughs> gets involved well like with trace and rafa because uh trace has a ship the silver angel and uh rafa wants to use it to smuggle uh spice of course they don't know this she doesn't tell them this they get to do this job of the kessel see solo reference uh did the kessel so run whatever parsex anyway <laughs> um and uh they and ahsoka finds out they're taking um the spice to the Pike Syndicate. Another solo reference. Uh, but of course, I don't even remember that they were in solo. I talked about them in the last video that showed up in you know season six of Clone Wars, and I was like, hey, I saw those guys in Boba Fett, and someone pointed out to me, oh, they were also in solo. And I was like, oh, really? I don't remember that movie. It's not very memorable, and it's been a while since I've seen it. But anyway, there, I guess they were there too. Uh, <laughs> um, and so. Uh, there was a Osaka was pissed off when there's when she finds out that they're smuggling spice and they get an argument and and Trace is like oh they're gonna take my ship and just stupidly dumps the spice 
which is kind of a plot convenience too, so they could have a, a, I don't know, it's a really dumb thing to do, and it seems like they do it just so they could have these next two episodes, because at the end of the episode, of course, you know, Ahsoka tries to use her Jedi mind trick um, to get the um, Pike Syndicate to just let him go, even though they don't have the spice, but she only does it for one person, not the other person. This is the other person who's like, hey, why are you letting him go? I was like, why doesn't she just do the Jedi mind trick on that other person? Obvious answer, plot, plot, plot. So the episodes can happen. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, so they get arrested, and then that leads to the next episode, Dangerous Debt. Now this episode absolutely did not need to exist like even more so this this is this uh four-parter should have been a two-parter or maybe you can make it a three-parter but really it should have been a two-parter and there's not enough meat in the bones of this story for four parts in this episode starts with them in prison and they go through all these adventures they escape they do this and they do that and it ends with them back in prison What's the freaking point? <laughs> There's no freaking point to this episode. It's a complete waste. And plus, it's just frustrating. Like, these characters, like, they're supposed to be just these two average women who live in poverty, and yet they're, like, able to do these. I know it's a cartoon, but they do this, like, supernatural superhero shit. I don't know. And they haven't figured out that the circus a Jedi yet. I don't know. So I didn't really like this one. <laughs> it's really, it really did not need to exist. And then the final episode, Together Again. Um, we're, and I like this one a little bit better because um, the the sister, the sucker comes up with a ploy to get the sisters free. But they, in fact, like come up with a plan to get more spice to try to actually free Ahsoka, but by the time they get back, the, you know, Syndicate realize that she's a Jedi, and they think it's all a, a Republic plot, so they're just gonna kill them all. Um, but, you know, Ahsoka had set up the bombs that conveniently go off the right time, and they managed to escape. And you see the uh, Bo-Katan and the other Mandalorians in the background, um, like, just sitting around, staring, ooh, look, and just looking at them, and I'm thinking, oh, so they're gonna come in and rescue them. But they don't. They just they just sit there and stare at them and eventually <laughs> follow uh, Ahsoka back to Coruscant and then approach her when she's already free. What if she had died and they were just wasting their time looking at her through binoculars? But whatever. Uh, so, yeah, I liked this episode. It, it was fine. All right. So... Now is when we get to the meat and the bones. The final four-parter that, as I said, it could have been a movie that is epic, epic, epic. Uh, that kind of takes place um, at the same time uh, as Revenge of the Sith. This is something I knew, of course, before I even started watching The Clone Wars. I was told about this. And so I've been waiting and waiting to see it. And it didn't disappoint. Uh, maybe... I would appreciate it, like, I would have liked being surprised <laughs> and not knowing that it was taking place during the timeline of Revenge of Sith, but that's all good, that's fine. Uh, I mean, it was all over the internet, so there's no way to really avoid it. Um, and, uh, so, Old Friends Not Forgotten, um, where uh, Ahsoka had already teamed up with Bo-Katan to try to take back Mandalore from Darth Maul, and her plan is to go to uh, the Republic to uh, get their help uh, in doing so, and uh, you see her reunited with Anakin, and you see like the, the other Jedi are still stained offish to her because she left the Jedi, and she's not one of them anymore, uh, but Anakin still treats her like an old friend and uh, like that all the clones like changed her mask to paint it uh to be like her face as a sort of uh you know homage to her uh and they still call her like rex is like you know she says to rex you don't have to call me commander she's like okay commander <laughs> like like he um 
Like, he knows that, but he, he will always think of her that way, and uh, because he, he respects her, and he respects her greatly. And this is, of course, amazing setup, that there is this, this keen, like, strong friendship relationship between these clones and Ahsoka, and that they really respect and It's more than just they've been programmed to fight the wars. Uh, and this is something that wasn't really lagging in Revenge of the Sith the, when, uh, with the clones. You see them working together, but here you, you see like a close-knit friendship working relationship, which, which makes what's about to come a lot more <laughs> devastating. Um, yeah, and so, uh, and so in this episode, they go, um, so... They want to get a Mandalore, like, she wanted, like, Obi-Wan and Anakin to bring, like, the whole forces and go with them, but then, of course, the events of Revenge of the Sith start to happen, where, uh, the Separatists attack Coruscant and they kidnap, um, Chancellor Palpatine, which, of course, is what happens in the text scroll at the start of Revenge of the Sith, so Anakin and, um, Obi-Wan had to go be in Revenge of the Sith, so they can't go do this. Uh, and But Anakin convinces Obi-Wan to let them send Rex as the commander and Ahsoka as an observer uh, to Mandalore to free that. So we see them go to Mandalore with Bo-Katan's help, and they sort of, um, they, you know, defeat the, um, the, uh, was the Prime Minister, who is just a puppet, he's just Darth Maul's puppet, and they easily defeat him, but they can't find Darth Maul, and the whole point is to not let Darth Maul escape, uh, and so, uh, you know, and at the end of the episode, Darth Maul, as she encounters Darth Maul, it's like, ah, and they get their lightsabers out, and they cuts the credits, which was really exciting, uh, <laughs> loved it. Uh, so, um, absolutely amazing episode. So, even better, next episode, another top-notch amazing episode. The Phantom Apprentice, um, where Ahsoka has to confront Darth Maul, like, they have this little fight at the start of the episode, but he gets away, so they still they spend the, the rest of the episode looking for him. Uh, and, um, yeah. Um, and eventually, like, and they had to, to find him, and he has this plan to sort of, you know, uh, he kidnaps one of the, uh, he was kid disappointed because he wanted Obi-Wan to show up, and we find out later it was because he wanted Anakin to be there because he wanted to kill Anakin because he knew that Anakin was Darth Sidious' rightful apprentice, so he wanted to deprive Sidious of his apprentice, and so he set up, in fact, set up this whole thing like, the whole thing was a trap, like, of Bo-Katan attacking, like, he set it all up so that he could lure Anakin Skywalker, so he was disappointed that Anakin didn't come, he was like, oh, just you, and so he does, like, a uh, Vulcan mind meld or whatever to one of the clones to, to find out who Ahsoka was, and so when he finds out that Ahsoka is a disgraced Jedi who, does, who left the Jedi, uh, he tries to do the whole join me and together we can rule the galaxy kind of thing, which of course, you know, obviously Ahsoka's not going to fall for it because she's like, oh yeah, you want me to join, you want me to help you defeat Sidious just so you can replace him, which of course she's got a point. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and I talked about Darth Maul last season, whereas in the earlier seasons, especially when they first introduced him, I was like, eh, do we really need Darth Maul? I mean, in, in the Phantom Menace, he was just like a, a minion. Like, he wasn't really a real character. He was just this cool-looking guy who would go woo, -woo with his like, double-sided lifesaver. But he wasn't actually a good villain or a fleshed-out character. He was just like the minion. Um, but I talked about last season how I really liked what they did with Darth Maul and I thought they really did justify bringing him back and they made him a much more interesting character. Obviously could, they could have just made a new character to do this but of course yeah, Darth Maul had uh, that um, established fan base already and double sided lightsaber and he looks cool. So why not? <laughs> I don't really, even though it kind of gives a sense that death is impermanent uh, because they keep bringing back characters that died like Darth Maul Boba Fett, uh, 
like death is starting to have no meaning in Star Wars, but whatever. Um, like Force Ghost is okay because that that's still death just because they're just a ghost. But actually saying, oh no, that character's not dead. And in fact, I like how Obi Wan says, you know, my advice is to capture him because last time I tried to kill him, he didn't stay dead. <laughs> that's kind of to me. That was kind of the point. But. I do love, despite that, I still have some issues with bringing him back to life or whatever, and they could have just easily created another character, but I like what they did with him, and I love the character of Darth Maul, especially at his use in these episodes I thought were pretty fucking amazing. And in fact, I, maybe it does add a bit to have an established character who was previously apprentice to Sidious and how uh, he's kind of resentful to Sidious for that. He still refers to him as my master, which is pretty interesting. Um, but And then we get this epic fight between Ahsoka Tano and um, Darth Maul. And apparently they had the original actor who played Darth Maul in The Phantom Menace do mocap for this. Uh, which I think is pretty cool knowing that. Uh, and the, the, I must say, like, the, the, the fight scenes were, were really intense. Like, I did really appreciate them and thought they were really good. And I, I felt the stakes. Because, uh, well, I mean, I know Ahsoka's not going to die, but still, it still felt the stakes. Um, and uh, and then she actually, I thought he was going to get away, but he doesn't. They actually manage, she manages to stun him and capture him. And that I, I was really intense. Like, I, and I love that how, you know, um, he fell and he, I thought he was going to fall to his death, but she like uses the force to keep him floating. And then the clones like fly by and just stun him and like grab him. <laughs> like that was really cool. So I loved this episode so then we get into the next episode uh which i also loved uh called shattered this is the order 66 episode and god damn it it was so good it was so good it was so powerful so they left um Mandalore, so they so Bo Katan has uh taken back rule of Mandalore. Although, from what I hear, is short lived because the Empire, when they take over, I think they take it from her. Um, so, um, um, yeah, but maybe that's explained more in Rebels. I don't know, but anyway, um. So they're flying back to Coruscant with Darth Maul, and of course you know all the all the shit's about to go down. And we get this lovely scene with Ahsoka and Rex. I think I knew exactly what they were doing, but they damn it, they pulled on my heartstrings so well because I knew I knew they were about that Rex was about, just about to turn over for Order 66. And even if I didn't know this is you know, it had hypothetically, if I hadn't seen Revenge of the Sith, or I wasn't didn't catch on to the fact that this was taking place at the same time as Revenge of the Sith, and I didn't know Order sixty six was about to happen, it was still quite telegraphed. The way that Rex is like, oh, I really respect you and I love you, and oh, we're so great, and oh, we love each other, and it's so great. Um, well, most TV shows, it would mean one of them would die. <laughs> Whenever any TV show, maybe when these two characters are talking about how perfect their life is and how much they, how great it is and how much they like each other, you know one of them is about to die. In this case, of course, they didn't die. It's more of uh, one of them is about to try to kill the other one very desperately. Um, and so, and God, even though it was so telegraphed, uh, it still worked. I was like, oh, I know what you're doing, but it's just working. <laughs> you're pulling on those heartstrings. Uh, it was just, yeah, it was so good. And then, um, so then the Order 66. I love how, and let's not gloss over, like, the beautiful scene. I still like Revenge of the Sith. I still, it's not a perfect movie, but I, I damn those people who say it sucks. I think they're wrong. I, I, it is, I, I, it is one of my, it's definitely the best prequel, easily. Um, but this scene kind of mirrored that one they had. Like, one of my favorite scenes from Revenge of the Sith is when Anakin, like, is looking out of the cityscape of Coruscant, and he hears the voice of Palpatine in his head saying that, um, 
you know, you got to save Padme and she's going to die. And they, and they play this really haunting music and you see Padme looking at the same sky. And this is when, um, you know, Windu's going off to arrest Palpatine and Anakin's going to let it happen. And he, the, it's such a great scene to get this sort of inner voices of him. And this is right when he turns to the dark side right before. And they do a, a scene similar to that. And they, where they play that eerie music where both kind of um, Maul and um, Ahsoka, because they're connected to the Force, can hear, like they can hear, they play some of the dialogue between Windu and, um, and uh, Anakin and the Chancellor right before, uh, right before you know, Anakin kills Windu and, and turns to the dark side. And they can feel the disturbance in the force, and, and even though they're and Ahsoka, particularly being so connected to Anakin, uh, and we did get this in that little four-parter with the um, trace or whatever, we did get this nice moment where Anakin could sense Ahsoka was on the ship that was leaving, uh, and so they it, that was because it helped hint that there's this connection, and that they could feel each other that they're, they're strong, sort of. Uh, things happening so she could sense what was happening with him turning to the dark side and and so there's several reasons and yeah but that was just such a powerful that was such a great scene but there's several reasons i heard some people complain about her um surviving order 66 but there's several reasons why I buy it. One was this. One is because she kind of was on edge. Like, she knew something was wrong. Uh, where most of the other Jedi, or all the other Jedi, were not as connected to Anakin specifically. So they weren't aware. They weren't sensing something's wrong until it was happening. Like, Yoda, he sensed that Order 66 was happening once Order 66 was already on its way. And he was able to to dodge it because he's fucking Yoda. But <laughs> Ahsoka sensed it before Order of 66 happened because she could sense Anakin's turn to the dark side. So she was already on guard. She was already knew that something was terribly, terribly wrong. Now, granted, she didn't know specifically that Rex was going to go try to, you know, the clones were <laughs> going to try to kill her, but she knew that something was really off. And of course, I also glossed over Darth Maul's warnings where he was saying when he was really heavily hinting that Sidious was going to win and take over over and there would be no more Republic. Um, which I also loved. <laughs> it was also very sort of foreboding. But And so that's one reason why I buy that she escaped Order 66. The other reason is clearly there was something in Rex fighting against his urge to execute Order 66. Uh, which they made very clear where he mentioned fives, like fine fives. And he hesitated because he has true affection for his Ahsoka, and that part of him was fighting with his program. But of course, his program won out in the end, and then he came, after that, he became all gung ho and I gotta kill Ahsoka. But that hesitation, uh, which because he had such strong emotion, such strong feelings of affection for not romantic at all, which I love, but respect for Ahsoka that he um, that initially fought against that program and so he hesitated so can, so the fact she was already on edge and knew something was up and combined with that Rex hesitated I mean, I totally buy that she escaped Order 66 um, and that she was able to you know to fight off the clones and escape and god damn it it was so intense and this episode was so good uh and then she so she um lets out lets Darth Maul uh go free uh to create a diversion or is that the next episode but whatever this just god <sighs> I think it's this episode yeah but it's just such a good episode such a good episode. Anyway, we get to the other episode, which is also absolutely amazing. Uh, the final episode of the show, 
So I now have to sort of, if I ever do a top 10 of best final episodes of the show now, we'll have to include this one in it. Uh, victory and death. Um, so, yeah, so Darth Maul had been freed, and I love how she was, he was like, oh, let's team up and survive together. She's like, no, you don't get it. I'm not teaming up with you. I just want you to be a distraction. <laughs> Go create chaos so you can be a distraction. And as I said, I think this is the previous episode where and she takes the time to study the uh, fives that um, Rex is hinting at and she comes up with a way to uh, free Rex of his... Yeah, I think that was the previous episode. It ends right when Right, that episode ends right when they she um frees Rex of his program, which was super intense. I love the droids too, how all the droids sort of team up uh, <laughs> to help her with it. And I was really sad when the, when the clones killed the droids, but of course the droids were gonna die because the ship was crashing anyway. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself, but god damn, I love those droids. <laughs> but anyway, so this episode dealt mainly with her now that Rex actually. Um, was on her side, and and he, but he still remembered everything and knew that that the um, the it was all clones everywhere, and they just wiped out all the Jedi. Um, and they were teaming up to, and I love how they they specifically mention that Order sixty six includes killing any clone that helps the Jedi that refuses to kill the Jedi. You're supposed to kill them too, because um, that's that's Sidious for you. Um, and so, in this episode, they're sort of trying to find a way off the ship, and they're sort of fighting all the other, uh, clones that are trying to kill them, while Darth Maul is, is wreaking fucking havoc, <laughs> and I love that, he goes in the hyperdrive room and just, like, uh, utterly obliterates the hyperdrive, and, uh, God, it added so much tension, um, uh, to the episode, it was so amazing, and then you have uh, Ahsoka and Rex get into the um, the room, the shuttle room, to try to get in the shuttle. But of course, the clones anticipated it, and then they surround them. Um, I was thinking, like, why don't she just open the airlock doors and blow them out the airlock? <laughs> but um, she does explain that she does she refuses to kill them, and I like how Rex is like, yeah, but they're trying their best to kill us. Like, and so if we're not going to kill them, then and we're not going to surrender, then what else? What's our other fucking option? Uh, but she's she's like, no, look, like, I know that you know it's not their fault. They've been programmed. It it brings a a level of tragedy to the clones' death, to the clones' action that wasn't present in Revenge of the Sith. Uh, and this is what I talked about earlier, about how they did such a good job of establishing the emotional connection that these and the respect that these clones had for her. And now they want her dead at all costs. Um, and the tragedy involves in that and how she was able to save Rex for that. But, you know, I kind of wanted her to do like some magical Star Trek thing where she just like push a button and the gas would come through and all of a sudden that would cure them all. They do that in Star Trek a lot. <laughs> but I actually like how it wasn't that easy um, because they, she had to do like this detailed surgery on Rex in order to spare him. So it would be impossible to do that to each and every one of these germs, even any of them um and so they were in an impossible situation and this is when the droids come in to like start you know fucking with the, <laughs> the levels that drop them down and again it was all super intense and then darth maul shows up and, and steals the shuttle that they were going in to take uh that was that was super intense and then as i said i was so sad when they when they killed the, those droids those droids were awesome and then in the meanwhile, of course, you know, because Darth Maul destroyed the hyperdrive of the ship, it's on its way to uh, colliding into a moon. Um, and so there's, there's this high, high stakes, high tension, they're just about to die, and um, they managed to uh, get out on the ship. Um, at the last moment, like, Rex is flying the ship, but Ahsoka, Ahsoka's kind of just flying through the air, and he has to come and, and find her, like, 
I'm, I, it's Star Wars and it's a cartoon, so I'm willing to give him a bit of leeway with this. <laughs> and it looked, it did look really cool. And it was really super intense. And then uh, you get that powerful, powerful ending where she buried all the all the clones and and put their helmets on there. And the helmets were like painted, still painted, like her as a sign of respect for her. And then you see her look at the lightsaber. That Anakin gave her and just drop it. Um, and I assume they didn't show her leaving the plant, but I assume she and Rex left the plant because they had to go off and be in uh, Rebels and Mandalorian. So <laughs> I assume that they just left the plant and then they flash to some unspecified time in the future where Darth Vader comes uh, and finds the, uh, the lightsaber that he had left behind. Now, and also, of course, all the the um, clone uh, helmets that are still painted to reflect her. Oh, that, that was just such a powerful ending. That was such a powerful ending that, that really, really got to me. Um, I do wonder if... Um, if Darth Vader uh, knew like that Ahsoka was still alive or if he took that lightsaber to mean that she had died on the planet. I'm not sure. But um God. Yeah, it's just oh my god. It's just it was so powerful. Such a such an amazing end to this show. Such a great way to end the show. So that's it uh, for all the episodes of Season 7 of Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now, as always, I shall give uh, my uh, best and uh, worst episode of the season, in my opinion. As for the worst episode of the season, there's only one that I would consider for this title, and that is A Dangerous Debt. Uh, which is the episode with uh, Trace and, and Rafa, the one I said that doesn't need to exist. Uh, <laughs> like, honestly, every other episode, I think this season was good. This was the only bad episode this season. Uh, and, yeah, it was dumb. Like, it didn't need to exist. They, they just run out and they escape prison and they get back in, they get arrested again and they escape again and they get back again. And I was like, you could have just skipped all this. It was just, they really just wanted to stretch it out and drag it out for no good reason. Anyway, uh, as for best episode of the season, this is a lot harder to come up with. We got good episodes like A Distant Echo, Unfinished Business, Old Friends Not Forgotten, The Phantom Apprentice, and for so as for the best episode of the season, I'm really, really stuck between two episodes that I love so much. I almost love equally. Um... But I think I'm going to have to say the runner-up is, is Victory or Death, and that the best episode is Shattered. Honestly, but really, they're just two parts of the same thing, so I could just say both episodes together if I wanted to cop out, uh, because it's really just a two-parter. I mean, it's a four-parter, but really, these two episodes, the last two episodes of the show, form a two-parter. But uh, because that ending where... She's looking at that lightsaber, and then, then they shut Darth Vader. It was, oh my god, such a powerful ending. So I almost went with that as the best episode. But then, of course, the whole thing about seeing, actually seeing Order 66 being executed, and Darth Maul, like, wreaking havoc and shit, and shit like that, that. That was also, that was so amazing. Like, I don't know. You could, you could call it a tie for both these episodes since it's just a two-parter. But technically, I'm going to say the best episode of the season is Shattered. So as for my rating for Season 7 of Star Wars Clone Wars out of 10, I'm going to give this a 9. Excellent. A very I was very close to giving the season a 10. But uh, yeah, that four-parter with... Trace, even though it wasn't terrible, as I said, I think some people will say it's worse than it actually is. It's not that bad. It's okay. But it did have that one episode that completely did not be, need to be there. And they did stretch it out for too long where it should have just been one or two episodes. And then the, the four-parter with the Bad Batch, I mean, that wasn't amazing. That was, It was good, but it wasn't amazing. So I can't quite give this season the 10. 
but it's close to it. It's a strong, it's a very strong nine uh, for uh, season seven of the Clone Wars, especially, yeah, those last four episodes were easily a ten. Like, <laughs> like that was one of the best. And, like, if it was, if you consider it a Star Wars movie, it was one of the best Star Wars movies in recent times. It was so good. Anyway. So that is it. That's it for my uh, coverage of Season 7 of Star Wars The Clone Wars. Now I shall return next month to do my top 20 best episodes of Star Wars The Clone Wars and my top 10 worst episodes of The Clone Wars uh, next month. And then the month after I shall start my coverage of Rebels. Watching that for the very first time. Um, so, doing my top 10 uh, worst and top 20 best episodes, I was kind of debating whether or not I should bunch the four-parters, three-parters, and two-parters together, because they're basically just telling one story. Although, to be fair, some of the episodes in it, in these three-parters or four-parters are different and focus have a different focus, and they are kind of standalone, but not really, um, and... Like the, so like there are three parters, four parters where I like some episodes within that four parter better than others. Um, so at first I thought what I decided to do was to take just one episode from each of those four parters to represent the whole four parter, three parters. But then when I tried to make a list with that, I found that I didn't have enough episodes <laughs> to make 20. And so I decided I'm just going to include them all. In all the individual episodes. I'll end up having a whole bunch of episodes in the same four parter. But not really. There's some that will only have like two represented. I know the um, final four parter, of course, will have all four for sure. Um, but, and it's kind of going to askew the results a little bit. But you know what? That's what I did for my Enterprise countdown because I had a similar sort of conundrum with Enterprise. And I, did, I decided to finally just do every episode individually. And that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, and that's also going to skew the worst ones because that, that android thing. <laughs> the one with the droids with that annoying droid. It's going to dominate my worst list. But whatever. <laughs> um, um, that's what I decided to do with that. So anyway, be sure to check out my channel for that coming next month in my cover of rebels coming the following month of course um i'm going to do my may the fourth review of return of the jedi in may uh i don't think i will cover uh obi-wan weekly but i will definitely do a video for that uh, at the end of the series. I didn't do one for Boba Fett because, I don't know, I just wasn't as interested in that, even from the very beginning. But I thought we won one I'm a bit more interested in, so I'll probably do a season review once that season's over. But anyway, I also cover many other shows on my channel, such as Star Trek, The Expanse, and more covering uh, Star Trek. I'm covering Picard and Discovery on a weekly basis. So you can check out my channel for that. Also check out my channel for many more videos um, on uh, lots of other stuff as well. So be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that. And thanks a lot for watching.